Hi, Ashley here with HearthookHome.com, and today we are working up the smallest size of my large dog sweater. So I have two dog sweater patterns. One is the dandy dog sweater for small dogs up to about a medium, and then for the dogs with longer legs, I have a large dog sweater. This is one with a flap on the back and a flap underneath the chest so that it's easier to get on and off those long, lanky legs. First things first, we need to figure out our materials. I am using a worsted weight yarn. This is Brava 500, um, just a worsted weight, super large ball. It's my favorite worsted weight yarn. And I am using my H 5 millimeter crochet hook that I have apparently used a lot because it's rubbing off. So first thing is to start with the neck. So this is the collar of our large dog sweater. Depending on which size you are making, you are either going to start with 63, 6, 73, or 80 three stitches in the round. This is what we will slip over the dog's head and we are going to build the body onto this. This the collar here uses front post and back post stitches. These are half double crochet stitches. If you do need a dedicated tutorial on how to make this collar, um, check out the front post and back post tutorial also available from Heart Hook Home. So we are ready to start on the body of the large dog sweater. So this is round 11. For all sizes of the large sweater, there are 10 rows of the collar stitches. You can do less if you feel like 10 is too many you can do fewer or you can do more. You can even roll it down once the sweater is finished to give it a more polished look. So for round 11, what we are going to do, we are going to chain one. We are not going to turn here. We're going to do a single crochet and a double crochet in the first stitch. So since this is where we joined, this is our first stitch. So we're going to do our first single and double in this stitch right here. So do a single and a double crochet right in that first stitch there. Now we are going to skip the next stitch and do a single and a double in the next. And we're going to do this all the way around the entire piece. So single and double, skip that one, single and double. So you can see that I am always placing these two stitches in what would be the front post half double crochet here. The back post, we're going to skip all of those and we're always going to do our single and double in that front post half double crochet from round 10. Now that I have almost made it all the way back around, I'm going to place my last two stitches, my single crochet and a double crochet, in the last stitch of that entire round. So a single and a double and now I am going to join to the top of the first single crochet. Now this will take your stitch count, depending on what size you are making, to either 64, 74, or 84. Like I said, I am working up the smallest size of the large dog sweater. So now that I've done my slip stitch, I am ready to start on round 12. This is where I get the most questions on this pattern, so we are going to take it nice and slow. Keep in mind, I am making the smallest size. For round 12, I'm going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip this very first stitch right here, which is a double crochet, and in the next we're going to do a single double. Perfect. Now we're going to repeat what we just did, the skip single double, seven more times for this size. So skip, single, double. That's a one repeat. Skip, single, double. That's two repeats. Skip, single, double, three, single, double, four, skip, single, double, it's five, That's six, and this is seven more times. Now, I have gone ahead in the pattern at this portion and said, okay, right now you should have so many stitches. So for the large size, I need to have 16 stitches so far. And that's really just to make sure that we are on pace. So you can count them in twos. So you have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 stitches so far. 
perfect. Now we are going to do an increase because this goes over the head, but it needs to get a lot bigger so that it can fit over their big chest, right? Their shoulders and their chest. So single crochet in the next stitch right here, the one that we would normally skip. We're doing a single crochet in that one. Now in the next stitch, we're gonna place a half double crochet and a single crochet. I have found that this is just the cleanest way to make these increases so that they are not obvious. So there was a half double and there was a single. So now we have put that increase right in there. We're gonna do a single crochet in the next stitch, which should be that double crochet from the previous row. Now, in the next stitch, do a single crochet and a double crochet. Perfect. Now, since that part can be a little bit confusing, I have gone ahead and put the stitch count in there again. So we can go ahead and count to make sure that we are still on pace. I should have 22 stitches so far for my size. Twenty-two. Perfect. Now we are going to repeat the portion in between the asterisks, which is the skip the next stitch, single double in the next. We're going to complete that or repeat that all the way around the entire piece. So skip the next one, do a single and a double. Skip that one, do a single and a double. Skip that one, do a single and a double. We're going to do this all the way around the entire piece. This should take our stitch count up for this row by two stitches. So for the large you have 66, extra large 76, and extra extra large you should have 86 stitches. Now for round 13 we are going to do the same exact thing that we did in round 12, which you might be like, well wait, we increased over here. Well sure, but when we go turn this time we're going to be increasing over here. So it's evenly distrib distributing the increases so that it grows into a cone shape. So for round 13, chain one and turn. We are going to skip the first stitch and we're going to do our single, double, now we're going to repeat that seven more times for the size that I am making. Six. And this will be my seventh repeat, which means that I should have 16 stitches so far. Nothing has changed as of yet. For the increase here, this is where we get a little tricky. We are going to take it slow again. We're going to single crochet in the next. In the next stitch, we're going to do a half double and a single. And then we're going to single crochet in the next, and that is our increase. So now in the next space, we're going to place our single crochet and double crochet. And now we're going to repeat the portion where we skip single double skip, single double skip, single double skip, all the way around until we get back to where we started. So I'm almost done with round 13. I am going to place my final two stitches in the, so I'm going to skip this one, place my single and double, the last two of this round, right in that last stitch there. Beautiful. And join to the top of that first single crochet and we are completed with round 13. You will not notice that it's starting to grow much until we get several more of these increase rows in. So let's go ahead and start with round 14. I'm going to chain one and turn. We're going to do that bit where we skip this one and do a single, double in the next. Now we're going to repeat that 16 more times and then we're going to do that increase where we do the single crochet, half double and single, and then single in the next. Now what we're doing here is it, it, it looks a little bit more complicated than it should probably, but all that we're doing is we're making sure that we're staggering where these increases lay. So here we've got the chest and body here where the shoulders will go. So I wanted to make sure that we're increasing over here and then we increase over here and now we're going to increase over here and then we're going to increase over here so that it's not only growing in one particular portion of this. We want the whole entire thing to grow into a cone shape and it cannot do that if we continue to place our increases right on top of each other, if that makes sense. So the only difference between rounds 14, 15, or 16 is that we are 
creating those increases in different places. So I'm going to complete round 14. All you're going to do is exactly what I've been doing this entire time. Just make sure that you do the repeats as many times as stated, number one, for the size that you are making, and number two, for the round that you are currently working on. So here on round 15, I have made it all the way back around to where I only have these four stitches remaining. Now we are going to do the increase here. Since last time the increase was on the opposite side, we're going to go here this time. So when we have those four stitches remaining, we're going to do our single crochet in one. In the next, we're going to do a half double crochet and a single crochet. We're going to single crochet in the next. And then we're going to do our single crochet and double crochet in the very last stitch. And now we can join to the top of the first single crochet. Now we're going to do round 16. Like I said, I am not going to crochet all of these rounds with you because we are just changing the place of those increases. I am going to go all the way through round 29 for the size large. If you are making um, the extra large or the extra extra large, the portion after this will be slightly different than mine. But for the most part, we are ready to continue on building these increase rows and I will hook up with you when I get to the end of round 29. So here I have made it through the end of round 29 and you can see that my piece has a distinct cone shape to it. We are going to do round 30 for the size large. If you're doing the extra large or the extra extra large, you'll do a few extra rows here just to make it a little bit taller. Just follow along with the pattern as I make this round 30 for the size large. I'm going to chain one and turn. The only thing different we're doing in this round right here is we're just doing the single crochet, double crochet, skip one, single crochet, double crochet, all the way around. There is no increasing, nothing fancy at all. So I'm just going to continue around. Now your stitch count at the end of this round here should either be 100, like in the one that I am making, or 110 or 120. So it is important that your stitch count is correct at the end of the row here. All right, we have made it all the way back around. We are ready to join to the top of the first stitch made. Now we are going to place a stitch marker in the last stitch that we made. So this double crochet right here, we're going to place that stitch marker right there and the only reason we're doing this is because it makes it easier to count here in just a second. So I'm going to clip my yarn, okay, we did join, I'm going to leave that hanging out, we'll fix that or weave in all those ends here in just a little bit. Alright, so now we are ready to do the chest flap. So what we've done here is we've marked what will be the center of their neck, so underneath their head right here, this is going to be the center of their chest. Okay, in between their legs. Their legs are going to go ish here or so. So what we need to do is we're going to count however many stitches we need to go on the other side, right, on each side of this stitch marker so that this chest flap is centered in between their legs. What we're going to do is we are going to be looking at the right side. So we're just going to be looking at what the other side of what we just did. For these size large, it says that I need to attach my yarn in the ninth stitch to the right of the chest seam. So over here, I need to count nine stitches, and we're going to attach there, and it should be in a single crochet. So here we've got a single, double, single, double, single, double, single. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and here's the ninth one. So wherever you attach it, it needs to be in what was a single crochet from the previous row. Chain one, we are on row one of the chest flap. I did my chain one. I'm going to single crochet and double crochet in this same stitch, right where we joined. A single and a double. Perfect. Now I'm going to Move my yarn tail out of the way from where we joined. We'll sew that in later. I'm going to skip the next stitch and I'm going to do a single, double in the next. Skip the next one, single, 
and double. We're going to do this a total of seven more times. So this was our first one. This would be the first repeat, the second repeat. This will be the third repeat. Then fourth, this is the one where we did our join. And now we're going to switch over to the other side, which is why we will go ahead and weave in all of those ends here in a little bit. We're going to, this is a double crochet, so we're skipping that one, and we're going to do a single, double. So we're just going across the seam that we had created while we were making the chest portion. So we need to end up for the large size, I need to have 18 stitches, or you could have 20 or 22, depending on the size you're making, but I need to end with 18. So I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now I'm going to do 17 and 18. So that is the end of the first row of my chest flap for the size large. Now we're going to do rows two through however many as it's stated. Now mine for the size large is two through 23. So I'm going to do this for 23 rows. You could have 25 or 27 depending on the size. So for rows two through 23 for this size, I'm chaining one and turning. I'm going to move all of this out of the way. We're going to skip the first stitch right here, and we're going to do a single and a double in this one right here. We're just doing some regular old flat out Suzette stitch here. Skip, single, double. In this last stitch, I'm going to do my single and my double. So that is the end of row two of the chest flap. You can see that it's just going to continue getting bigger. So I'm going to repeat that row until I have a total of 23 for the large size. All right, here we are with a completed chest flap. This is what will go down in between their legs. Now we are going to create the back flap that will overlap over top of this so that we can add our buttons or snap closures, whichever you prefer. So the first thing that we're going to do when we work on this back flap here is we are going to count however many stitches, as stated, for the size that you are making over to the left. So this is also in the pictures. All you're going to do is you're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and the fourteenth stitch right here is where I marked. Now what we're going to do, um, this is the part where I get a lot of questions because the chains don't make sense, and they will here in just a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and make a chain. So depending on what size you're making, you're either going to do a chain 16, 18, or 20. Since I'm doing the large, I'm going to chain 16. Perfect. Now this is going to be what will wrap around and button, okay? So we've got our chain. Now we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet in this marked stitch. So we don't technically have to mark it, it's just a lot easier if you do it before you've got your hands full with this chain. So in the marked stitch, marked stitch, I'm going to do my single crochet and my double crochet. And now I'm ready to do the repeat portion of the Suzette stitch. So I've got my chain hanging out. We're going to let that chill for a minute. We're going to skip the next stitch and we're going to do the single double in the next. Now we're going to repeat that 27 more times for the size large. So this is my 27th repeat. And now I am ready to do a chain on the other side so that it mirrors the chain that I have here. And now we have completed row one of the back flap. I know it doesn't look like much, but it will take shape here shortly. So now we are ready to work on row two. Row two, we are going to establish this Suzette stitch across these chains all the way back. So we are going to single crochet and double crochet in the second chain from the hook, and I like to go into the back bar, so I'm going to do my single and double right there. Skip the next, single and double in the next. Single 
skip single, double, skip single, double. We're going to do this all the way across this chain. Make sure that we're oriented now so that we are looking at the inside of the sweater so that we can go across these stitches here. When you get to that portion, you're going to just continue on with the Suzette stitch. So I've gone into that last chain there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this stitch and go into that single crochet like you normally would with the Suzette stitch. And I'm just going to do this all the way across and then across this chain. And I should end up perfectly right at the end of this chain. So now I've made it to my last two stitches I'm going or of the actual flap. I'm going to do my last two stitches in this last stitch here, and now I'm going to go across the chain. So make sure that I'm skipping this first chain here, and I'm going into this next one, and continuing that single double pattern skip single double. Okay, so here we are with the finished portion of row two of the back flap, and I just wanted to take a minute to explain what we're looking at here, right? So we've got our chest flap that is already completed. We've got the chains that we did on either side that we are going to use as soon as we're done creating the rest of this back flap. We're going to use this piece here and here and these are going to be our leg holes, right, when we continue crocheting. So we're just going to build onto this so that the, this portion here will go across the dog's back towards their tail. So for row three of the back flap, we are just going to do a straight up Suzette row stitch, or st Suzette stitch row, if I can say it. So chain one and turn, skip the first one, do your single double all the way across. Skip, single, double. And then row four is going to be a buttonhole row because we are going to place buttons here so we need to create buttonholes on the, this flap so that we can attach it to those actual buttons that we will then sew. There is a method that you can use instead of the buttonholes which we will talk about here, here shortly um, and I may end up doing that myself for this dog sweater in the end. We will do the buttonholes on video together so that you understand how to make those. If you choose to do the buttons I will hook up with you when we are ready to to start row four. For row four, which is the buttonhole row, we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to skip this first one and we're going to do a single double in the next. That's the very first thing. Now we are going to skip three stitches and in this next stitch here we're going to do single double. Now this right here is going to be your buttonhole when we go back through. Now we are going to continue all the way across and we're going to create one more buttonhole on the other side over there. So skip, single double, and repeat that as many times as stated. So for the size large that I am making, I would repeat this 39 times. It's my 38th repeat, my 39th repeat, and now I am ready to create the second buttonhole so that we have one on both ends. So I am going to skip these three stitches and in the last stitch over here I'm going to place my single and double. And that is my buttonhole for this end of the back flap. So now I've got my chest flap, I've got my back flap, just like this with my buttonholes where we will secure this down onto the chest flap and the leg holes are created here. So on the rows that follow buttonhole rows, and if you're not doing a buttonhole um, and you're doing snaps instead, you can just continue crocheting into these like normal with the regular Suzette. Just do the skip, single, double, skip, single, double in the last stitch. So for row five, which is a following the buttonhole row, we're going to skip the first two stitches and we're in this hole right here, we're going to do a single, double, single, double in the actual hole. One, two, three, and four. So this is going to be your button hole. And like I said, this does or has a tendency to stretch out a little bit as the dog wears it if they are very active. We are going to use larger buttons so that it barely fits through there, but it may stretch out. So just be forewarned. So 
now I am ready to skip the next stitch, which would be that double crochet right there, and I'm going to go into this single crochet right here, and I'm going to do a single double. I'm going to do that all the way across. When I get back over here, we are going to do a single, double, single, double in the buttonhole. We're going to skip this double crochet right here, and in this last stitch here, we're going to do our single double crochet. I am not going to continue on with my buttonholes because I am going to do the snaps, so I'm going to have a solid flap from here on out. If you choose not to do the buttonholes like I am going to do for this particular puppy, um, you are going to go ahead and crochet. It, just do not make the buttonholes. You're going to create and maintain the Suzette stitch just like you would if you were just crocheting row 3 over and over and over and over again until you get to row 16. Row 16 is where we start the body taper for the back side of the back flap so that it tapers towards the tail. Here I have just finished row 15 of the back flap, and before we get started on these decreases, I just want to do another check-in to make sure that yours is looking like mine. So, we've got our chest flap that we've got right here. Your back flap should not go all the way yet. We're going to start those decreases to make it taper towards the tail. When we get those snaps on, or the buttons, if you chose to do the buttonholes, this is going to be the leg opening. We are well on our way to completing our large dog sweater. Now for row 16, row 16 is slightly different than all of the following rows, but we are going to start our decreases with row 16. We're going to chain one and turn. We're skipping the first stitch. We're going to do a single double in the next like we have been doing this entire time. The only difference between row 16 and all of the regular rows is that in the last stitch we're only doing one single crochet. Instead of the single double, it's just one single. So I'm going to work my way all the way across this back flap, and then when we get to the end, we're going to decrease the stitch count by one, since we're not placing that final double crochet. So I'm getting towards the end of row 16, and when we get to the end here, like I said, we're going to skip this one, and we're just going to do one single crochet in this last stitch here, and that is the end of row 16. Now row 17 and row 18, 19, 20, these are all going to be the same, this following row that we're getting ready to do. This is what we're going to be doing the entire time until we get to the end. So chain one and turn. We're going to skip the first two stitches and we're going to do the single double in this single crochet right here. So skip, skip in this one, single, double single and double. We're going to repeat this all the way to the end. Now that I'm at the end of row 17, when I get to this very last stitch over here, these last two stitches, I'm only going to do that one single crochet in the final stitch. And so that is what we're going to be doing all the way until we get to the end. So for the large size, we are going to be continuing decreasing like this on both sides, so we're going to be going in on both sides, making it taper. I'm going to do that until I reach row 43 for the large size. So now that I've made it all the way to the end, and I only have my 35 stitches, I am ready to do my single crochet row, which goes around the entire thing. Both flaps, everything, all the way around. So you're going to do a single crochet edging row, and you're going to want to place those, just like when you do any crocheted border, you want to place those stitches evenly and consistently. So I'm going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet. It looks like, hmm, let's find a consistent plan of attack. I'm going to go into this stitch here, and then this side here, and then this stitch here, and then this side here, so that we keep it the same placement into the, this half of that stitch there, into this hole here, half that stitch there, to this hole here. So as long as we remain consistent, that helps our work be a little cleaner and more professional looking. And there we've got our nice clean edge. I'm just going to continue doing this all the way around. When we get to this front corner, so we've gone all the way up the side here and across this flat portion, when you get to each corner 
So on the top of the flaps here, this corner and this corner, you're going to make sure that you do three single crochets in each corner so that it doesn't pull in on itself too much. You've got one going this direction, one for the corner stitch, and then one going this direction. Now that I've made it all the way back across the bottom of my flap, I've gone around the whole front, around this, the front flap, around this side, around this side, and all the way back around to where we started. I'm going to clip my yarn, and I'm going to do an invisible join. If you've never done this before, it's quite beautiful, and I have a full dedicated tutorial for it on the Heart Hook Home YouTube channel as well. Basically, you're just going to pull your yarn straight on through, and I'll weave your, or thread your yarn needle. From where it comes out, go into the next first full stitch right here, front to back. Then come over the front, go into that same stitch where you just came out. Beautiful. Looks like a little stitch, right? Isn't that pretty? Like I said, I have a full tutorial for that for you to practice and get great at. I love that technique. It's my favorite for weaving in ends like that. So now that we have the edging row done, the entire sweater done, the only thing that's left is your buttons, your buttons or your snaps. So I have gone ahead because, like I said, the dog that I am making this for is extremely active. She's a hunting dog, and she's uh, only not even two years old yet, so she's very active. I decided that I was going to use snaps instead of buttons for this one. So these are these snow sew-on snaps, right? They come apart like this. You put one on this side, one on this side, and then you close it like this, right? So I'm just going to sew these on. The placement for this... You're going to want to use, I'm using this thread here, it's just one that I had on hand, but it's a nice, thick, very thick, heavy-duty thread. There's, I was thinking about using this one, but this is so much thinner compared to this one, and like I said, this dog is extremely active, so I want to make sure that this snap is not going anywhere. So I am going to use the darker one um, with this snap color. I think that's going to look really nice. So you're going to place your snaps, like you can see in the picture... You've got six total, so let me get all situated here. I'm going to put one here and one here, so my edge is right here. We're going to put two more about right here, and then we're going to put two more about right here. So I'm going to sew these on using my needle and thread. You're just going to go through, if you've never used these before, they're very easy to use. You just put this down and you go through the, the yarn itself up through here and you just go around and around and around and around and then you feed your needle through over to this one over here and you go in this hole and you go around and around and around and around and around. Have your dog try it on after you put these six on so that you can figure out exactly where you want to put them on this side here. But it should line up. It will look like it's off a little bit. This is where the chest is going to go, and that will be nice and puffed up. Let me move this down. So this is where her chest will be, and this is her leg, and it will be nice and puffed up because she's got all that chest, you know, area. So it will look like it's offset a little bit, but I promise you it will turn out fine. Like I said, if you can, have your dog try it on first. I'm going to finish sewing these snaps, and I will get a picture of my crazy Maisie in this beautiful dog sweater. I hope you enjoyed working up this dog sweater with me today, and that you will come back and crochet again with me soon. Thanks for watching.